Imagine being an 18 year old that has worked with some of the biggest business icons in the entire world, such as Grant Cardone, Patrick Bet David, and Ed Milet. And at such a young age, you're making $20,000 a month or more, whilst all your friends are still in school getting lectured from their teachers. Meet Erwin Kronk. Erwin's business took off so fast in high school that he ended up dropping out. And in this video, we talk about his journey to success over the past few months at such a young age and reveal the exact steps he took to go from normal high school kid to successful business owner in a matter of a few months. Welcome back to a student spotlight interview here with another client ascension student, Erwin Kronk. Just what you're doing is so impressive. And I know you're only 18 years old too, which is mind blowing for the audience. If you could just go into real quick who you are and what you're currently working on for business. So at the moment, I'm basically building sales funnels. Just brief, but I'm from London, England, lived in the Middle East for nine years. I've been back here for about two years now. Basically didn't fit in in school. Sure, most entrepreneurs feel the same in that sense. Dropped out basically while my business was starting to do quite well. And it was very hard to balance the both of business and school. So I dropped out, got super lucky in the beginning. I ended up working with Grant Cardone and his team super early. Just basically been working with his clients, that sort of thing. Building sales funnels, running content, similar to what you guys are doing. And basically just trying to help other businesses scale. And I've seen that's the best way to grow my business by helping other people grow. So that's pretty much what I do at the moment. So dude, you dropped out of high school because your business was doing so well that you just wanted to go all in and spend all the time on business specifically. How old were you when you got Cardone as a client? I was would have been 16 at the time. So I started building funnels and that sort of thing. I think I got lucky there trying to get clients like that again. Now that one of the keys from client ascension trying to get yeah. back in that spotlight again. Well, that's part of business, right? You have to put yourself out there. Typically, the guys that do put themselves out there, especially early on, you get rewarded for that. Now that you're in client ascension, you're learning some of these different outreach methods and just creating your own content and your own personal brand, you're going to start to attract guys like that as well, just a lot more often than making it just like a one-time thing. So really excited to see how that plays out. The question I have that'll open up this conversation even more is like, how do you hear about Client Ascension? And you're already working with guys like Cardone and doing well in business. Like what was the decision to join the program? It was a weird one, actually. I, still, I remember the exact moment I was going through <laughs> YouTube, trying to find those types of videos, Daniel's type of videos, the email, so those type of guys making the market marketing type of content and came across Daniel's video. I like kid you not, within five videos, I was like, where do I join? I just want to join whatever it is. Went into the description, found it, went through the funnel. And I think it was under 24 hours later, I was in Pine Ascension. I just felt like I never had a community of people who thought like me. It was, I'd quite, uh, I don't want to call it lonely, but like quite an alone journey. The whole process, I never really met people who thought the way I did it was always nine to five and going to school and going through college. And it was like the first time where I saw a group of people who I resonated with. I didn't really care about the price tag as much at the time. I just need people around me that think like me. That was the most difficult thing for me in the beginning is finding that. I think now I've found that that's the best thing. When I wake up, I just go, I'm going to see these people again today. Yeah. It's like the school for entrepreneurs, basically, which I think is really cool. And I feel like that's just what Client Ascension is, right? It's the school for entrepreneurs, like you said, and like the misfits of this world, because truly I felt the same way growing up in high school, growing up in college. There were not a lot of entrepreneurs that I was surrounded by. So I always felt that there was something wrong with me, but I just didn't fit in. It was definitely lonely at times, especially because of the way entrepreneurship works. It's a roller coaster. There's the ups and then there's also the downs. And when you're down, it could be really lonely, man. And so like having that community and being able to build and cultivate that with guys like yourself is the ultimate goal for client ascension. So it's really cool to hear you say that. And I think there's a lot of credit to be given here as well for you taking that leap of faith, watching a couple of YouTube videos and then making that big of an investment in yourself. I know a lot of guys too that are watching watching these videos and know about the program, a big stopping point is the price of admission. And I know you're in a spot when you joined where the price of admission was not like something that you could just pay all the way up front. So maybe walk us through that decision in your mind before you pulled the trigger on it and then where you are today, knowing what you know about the program and the results you've been able to get. Yeah, exactly right. When I first joined, you get scared. I've never spent big sums of money before. So I looked at it and I think the way I knew it was the right thing is I think I watched five or six of Daniel's videos and then I obviously went through a link book to call the sales team, went on it, and then obviously heard the price. And I think what happened to me is at the time when I heard 
at the price, I was like, there's no chance. And then the next 12 hours, with no exaggeration, so I just like could not think about it. Got another call, I was like, I need to find a way. I need to get in this somehow. And then we found a solution and I can single-handedly say that is honestly the best choice I've ever made. I've never felt there's people I can just go to and ask questions. Within 15 minutes, you have answers to questions that would normally take months to find. And it's just so useful for that. And it's cool because that's the reality, right? I've joined coaching programs around the same ticket price and there's always like that scarcity mindset that pops back up is like, oh, I don't need this. Like I'm fine without it or this is too much. And then at the same time, you're like, how committed are you? And you show that commitment by investing back in yourself, putting it all on the line, which is risky. But that's why we're entrepreneurs at the end of the day. And that's why a big part of your success is you just putting yourself out there and continuing to bet on yourself. I want to also ask now, joining Client Ascension, when you first got into the program, what were some of those big problems you're facing in your business that you immediately were wanting to solve? For me, it was I had no structure in my business. It almost felt like I was trying to design something with no plan whatsoever. Whatever I saw, because I was a, one of those YouTube guys, every time I needed a problem solver, I'd just go on YouTube and find something. And the issue with that is you would never know if that's the right thing or actually have like a question behind. They tell you to do something. You can never have like, why would that work? And for me, when you come in there, you have people who literally specialize in that thing with lead gen or operations or marketing. You have someone specifically for that that you can ask questions. And I think within the first two weeks, like I got every single question I had in the last 12 months answered because there was literally someone specifically in that place that knew the answer instantly. The clarity I felt after the first two weeks, it was just insane. I knew exactly where I needed to go. And a lot of it, I think Patrick Bad David said, like cutting the fat, like taking the stuff that you don't really need to do. I was just focusing on the stuff that actually matters. And before I was like half doing things that just aren't important. Organizing your files, how much money is that going to make you? For me, I was almost like just doing work that didn't really exist. It just honestly cut all of the stuff that was not useful and just focused on things that was super useful for me. That's something that Hormozzi says as well. And it's kind of how we've built Client Ascension is around that belief of like trim the fat. Don't have things in the program that are not actually going to contribute towards your success and your growth in business. And so that's kind of what you're seeing and explaining now is when you get in there, it's like, this is exactly what you need to do. This is what works. Go out and implement it. And if you have questions, we'll answer them. It's as straightforward as possible because that's what's required. And then there's all the qualitative stuff that goes with it, the community aspect and the coaching calls and, and just the culture in general, which I think adds to like the appeal of going out and implementing these things and having the trust that it'll actually work. And so it was really cool to see. I guess in those first two weeks, what were some of the things that you went out and implemented that immediately you saw a return on? One of the key lines that I remember was, why would someone pay for something if you're not doing it yourself? I remember I had that conversation with Daniel and I was telling him, it was that first call where I was explaining what I did. And the first thing he said is, yeah, you do all this stuff for clients, but I don't see any of that on your website, on your YouTube. And yep. it just hit me straight away. I'm selling something that I'm not even doing myself. I went away and started doing what I was selling and just instantly people were like, oh, hey, I saw you do this now. Would you do that for me? And a big thing as well was I was selling like the YouTube sales thing, basically how Daniel's getting clients through that. I remember he told me, you've got to promote that you're doing that because you came through our system that way. Imagine if you did that to yours as well. It's so obvious it works. And he told me to look at what I was doing in other things and do the same thing. If you see something's working for someone else, try and do it. Because we always think we know better when there's someone who's literally done it a million times and knows exactly how it works and has been successful there. Absolutely. And it's just like, pay attention to your own tendencies, right? How did you find yourself into our funnel? What went into the purchasing decision, right? Like if you saw us not posting on YouTube and posting content and sending emails and posting student success stories, it probably wouldn't have been as confident of a purchasing decision at all for you because we weren't backing up what we were trying to sell with doing it ourselves to sell who we wanted to sell. And one of the quotes a student I had on here a couple of weeks ago, Matthew Johnson, that I love, he said, I like money more than my own opinion. And I feel like that's the killer for a lot of entrepreneurs is like our ego gets in the way or we think that if we do things our way, it's going to work out better. But a lot of the times there's another quote is like success leaves clues. If you're around all these guys that are, are crushing it or just where you want to be in business, you emulate what they're doing. It's probably going to work. By the way, when did you join the program? That had to be three or four months ago at this point. I think it probably would have been like start of April around that time. So about three and a half months ago. Looking back on the first three months, like what are you most proud of in terms of like wins or milestones in the business? I think probably it goes back to structure. I can see that it's a business now. I have someone working for me now. That was one of the biggest things for me. I had like freelancers doing work and to now know that someone works full-time for me, that's like a huge achievement. And then also I've hit revenue goals. I had the first 
three weeks I joined, I made an additional 10K just like that because I refined my offer, created content and was actually acting like a business and not just a person. That was super key for me. I think hiring was the biggest thing because that makes you feel like a business. You've got people following your visions. I think that's really cool to have for me and obviously revenue goals and those sorts of things as well being hit. I love that you mentioned hiring and just building a team because that's the ultimate goal I have for students in the program is to go from feeling like you're a solopreneur and running kind of like a stitch together operation to running an actual business and what that takes and something that I really love about you dude is you are embodying what it means to be an executive leader I feel like a lot of guys are entrepreneurs or they're solopreneurs or freelancers and there's not enough guys in the market that are ready to step into being an executive leader which is someone that can lead a team to do really important work and that's what you're doing and when you do that the level of fulfillment the sense of purpose that comes with it it's just like the best feeling in the world and so to see you start in the beginning phases of bringing in that first team member and just working on yourself as a leader as well dude i cannot wait to have you back on here a year from now and just you're gonna have like an army it's just gonna be so cool man i always talk about that moment it's like the first task you give away to that person it's like you just don't have to do that one thing that takes up two three hours a day so that specific role was they're basically just handling all of editing youtube and all those things i remember that first time where i had a pile of about 100 videos that i just could not be bothered to edit and I remember those just getting done in about two weeks and it's just like <laughs> that feeling where you just get so much stress taking off and it's I think the key thing is they actually enjoy doing that thing so it's like taking yes. something you hate someone who actually loves doing that thing you're now giving them a purpose and something that they are excited to wake up every morning and do it just becomes so cool once you get into that it's addicting you're gonna build a big team you're just gonna help a lot of people in the process because the biggest thing that people don't realize if it's just you your ability to have an impact is so limited if you're working with a team it multiplies very quickly. And one of the other questions I have for you as well with building that team, I guess like you hit the revenue goal, you got to organize, you hire your first team member. What's on the agenda for these next three months for you? What are some of your goals? I think it's ready to start now. Daniel's been on my back about getting the next big client. I obviously had that early success with Grant and now to get another big client like that who can pay 10, 20, 30k a month. That's really my goal now is to get top level clients who get a good revenue share and that sort of thing. For me, if I had to take like my whole experience it's the confidence in my business and what it looks like because if you told me six months ago i could charge 10k a month for something i would have just not believed that and <laughs> the fact that now i've done it within quite ascension is i feel like i can deliver that now and i remember the first time so i actually sold a, a 10k a month package about two months ago to a client and i remember when it hit my account i was like there's no way Whoa. someone would pay 10k a month i'd seen like 10k a month from multiple clients but to have that from one client i'd never seen that before and then it happened again and i was just not believing it and i think now i realized if you sell to the right people, you can make a lot of money. And if you sell to rich people, you'll get rich doing it or something like that. And I yeah, think it's like so true. Help rich people make more money and you'll make more money in the process as well. What goes into to selling a $10,000 service? What are you actually providing for this client? So I'm basically creating video content to handling all of their YouTube, sometimes TikTok and short form as well. And then creating sales funnel to attract. And we've just started now. Our next offer is to throw in ads as well into that. So like boosting their content and potentially even adding an SDR as well to close them as well. So my goal is in the next two, three months to have basically a whole client acquisition package. So they can just fully forget about acquiring clients from lead gen to all these things. They can just hire us as getting clients for them completely on autopilot basically. So at the moment it's just sales funnels and content, but to hopefully do the whole client acquisition service for them would be pretty cool. And I feel like a big reason for your success, you've been refining these skill sets for short form content, for running ads, for building funnels for the past couple of years. I mean, I see right in your background, you have a stack of books from legends like Tony Robbins and Jim Quick and Jim Collins, all these guys that teach a lot of these concepts that you're now going out and crafting into your own service offering for clients. Maybe just talk about the importance of self-education and just personal development that's helped you to get to where you're at in business today. Yeah, 100%. I think the key thing for me, which helped me back in the beginning is I felt like when you started seeing results, you didn't need that anymore. You sign your first client and you think, oh, I don't need to learn about getting clients anymore. I've already done it now. I made that mistake very early on. And I think now I've realized I know nothing compared to the guys like Hormozzi, like these guys who have just done the whole process many times. And I think it's key to grow a little bit of an ego when I start out and make money and you yeah. like compare yourself to 
friends and I think I've sort of now just completely forgotten that and tried to focus on the bigger picture. I'm nowhere near where I want to be in 10 years. So it's just key to look at that because some people are different, but I think when I focus too much on what I'm doing right now, build a little bit of an ego. So I think it's like yeah. really focusing on like where I'm trying to get to and not what I've done in the last six months, pretty much. No, I feel that as well. It's good to have that balance of being happy for yourself or proud of yourself for getting to where you're at today, but also realizing you're so far away from where you want to be. I feel like that's what keeps us going as entrepreneurs. And it's also what's going to empower you to create the opportunities for future team members and to create amazing results for your clients. And so one of my favorite questions to ask on these interviews is in a program like Client Ascension and just really in any coaching program, there is a dark side to it. And what I mean by that is there are students in coaching programs that for whatever reason are just not taking the action. They're not implementing. They're not going through the course material. They're not asking questions and therefore they're not getting the results that they wanted coming into the program. If you're speaking to this group of students, based on your experience going through Client Ascension, what's like one piece of advice you tell them that if they were to do this, the results and just their perspective on everything would change? For me, it's like realizing who you're sitting across the table from. You guys are doing 10, sometimes 20, even 30 times more than what we're doing in our businesses. And it's like looking at that and saying, let's say you're at 10K a month right now and you're working with someone doing 300K a month. It's like looking at that and thinking there's no way you know better in that situation when they're doing 30 times more than you. I can confidently say that the more questions I've asked, the more money I've made because I actually write down all of the answers I get to uh, questions I've asked in like a Google Doc. I can see the weeks, wow. how many times I've asked questions, how much money I've made and it's actually correlated. The time wow. where I was going to all the calls, my revenue was spiking at that time and you might call that luck but I like generally don't think that is because when I was asking questions, I was solving problems that I had. So then solving problems generally just makes you make more money. Bro, that might be my favorite response to that question ever. That is what I'm trying to get across to the rest of the community and it's awesome for me to hear because that's like my core belief the key was for me i didn't want to ask the same question twice so like to note down and oh i have this problem again and going back to that it's been super useful like i've got things like a 20 page doc now of every single question <laughs> anything valuable that i've got so it's like i don't need to constantly like focus on an entire day of solving a problem it's like no i've got the answer right here and i think that's i'm like the ultimate note taker you've gone taking notes on yeah. every call i just like to have i'm a huge reader so i like to have all the information and not have to like find answers that I've already solved in the past. Dude, you're an optimizer. You're just really good at what you do. I got to say that. I'm just so impressed. So my last question is, what's your advice to someone starting in the agency space in general? What's some piece of advice you'd give to them? I would say I got super lucky actually early on. I got mentored by Ed Milet. And one thing he said, it's so key to be quick with stuff. Do something in a week that takes a month, just like doing it super quick. Because I think so many people focus on doing something that doesn't really matter but just doing it fast because if you mess up you mess up quick so it's just easy to just get that out of the way i think so many people spend and this was me in the beginning by the way so i've done this of experience i've spent a month building a website two months <laughs> building content and still have not sent one email out to actually find the client so i think it's a bit controversial i'd say in the agency space but i'd say find the client then solve like all the problems you have once you've got absolutely i feel like every agency owner i've talked to once they get the client they're not really ready to service them it's like the classic quote of an entrepreneur or someone that jumps out of a plane and then builds an airplane on the way down. You jump and then you figure it out. Whereas most people want to figure it out and then have the comfortable walk over the bridge. That's just not the case, man. You're just a wealth of knowledge for people listening. And the fact that you're backing it up with results and just building a team now and doing good work for your clients is the best part of it all. Yeah, and nothing would be possible without you guys. I actually thought about this the other day. I couldn't even imagine where I would be now if I hadn't joined. Everything that I've done the last three, four months after joining, it's been so planned and done correctly that I still can't even remember how my business looked like before. It was just always on to the next thing and never even looking at what the next thing is. Oh, it's obvious. Let's just build a website when you don't even have a client. And I think you get to ask questions to the right people at the right time and you just get the answer super quick. And yeah, nothing I've done in the last three, four months would be possible without you guys. So yeah, I really appreciate it. I really do. I appreciate it. But I got to throw it back onto you, Erwin, because nothing would be possible without you actually taking the action and implementing some of the stuff that we're telling you here. And I think it's cool because that's the definition of growth right there. And the hope and the goal is when we talk again, you know, in three months, you say the same thing, like you didn't even recognize the business you're running today. And if that's the case, every three months, every six months, that means you're doing something right and you're growing. And so the fact that you feel that way to some people that sounds scary, but to me, I've gone through this process enough to know like that right there is 
growth. For our audience listening, for students in Client Ascension, obviously they could find you on Slack. They could just DM and, and reach out to you there. But for everyone else, and even if they're in Client Ascension and they want to follow you on social media, where can they find you there? I'm on LinkedIn's probably my main source. I've been doing that for like two years, starting my Twitter journey now. I started about a week ago now. So Owen underscore Kronk or Owen Kronk on LinkedIn doing YouTube event now. So I'll link it all below and we'll get some people over there because I'm sure once you start to crank out content, like we talked about off camera a little bit, you're working on a lot of content now. These people are going to want to hear it because there's so much more wisdom that you can share with them. So thanks so much, Erwin. Appreciate your time. Keep crushing it. And I can't wait to catch up with you again soon.